Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I'm out on Melton Hill Reservoir this morning, about 6.30 a.m. and I'm getting ready to start fishing. Today's gonna be one of them days where I'm gonna throw a few different baits and try to catch a few different types of fish. I'm mostly gonna be targeting bass to start with though. I've got a tournament coming up out here in a couple weeks. And so I thought I'd kind of probe around a little bit and see if I could find some bass and see if I could find some areas that I wanna hit out here during the tournament. So I'm gonna start out throwing this right here. This is a uh, three inch Berkeley Gulp minnow in the smelt color and that's on a 132nd ounce jig head with a number two hook and gonna work along the shoreline here specifically these rocks it's kind of a, a bluff wall type scenario that comes down and I'm gonna see if I can find some small mouth to start with now I also have my ultralight rod with me today and some one inch gulp minnows that I'll probably throw out here at some point just to get bluegill crappie you know yellow bass whatever we'll buy because everything eats those and then I've got a Ned rig rod uh, I've got my a rattle trap here I may do some trolling with I've got my skipjack rod so I've got kind of a variety of baits i'm kind of prepared for any situation that may come up out here this morning but really though kind of just want to get a variety just get out here and get some bites and have some fun and you know maybe find a, a spot or two that i want to hit during the bass tournament here a couple weeks from now so anyway i'm gonna quit flapping my gums and get over here and start making some casts and we'll see if we can't catch us something today all right guys and again here is the bait a gulp three inch gulp minnow i've got that on an abu garcia veritas rod medium light action small loose reel and my line here is too heavy really for this this is six pound line because this is my ned rig rod i didn't want to switch it out just for this normally i would prefer four i've got my line wrapped around my reel my rod here i swear every time i try to talk to the camera i get line wrapped around my rod or something else goes wrong it never fails but anyway i was saying this line's a little bit heavier than what i would normally like for this application my ultralight setup with the one inch i like two pound line if i'm specifically targeting bass with the larger gulp i like four pound but the smaller diameter line you can use the more bites you're going to get i'm just letting that thing fall down and i'm going to start twitching it if i'm not getting bit down through here with this what i'll probably do is put this three inch bait on my ultralight with the two pound line i almost feel better about going to a lighter line than what i would like than going too heavy but i do have a fish right here first thing first cast that feels pretty good too i hope it ain't some dang old channel cat it is we starting out the morning with a channel cat here <laughs> Well, that's a, I may leave early today if this is all I can catch. These danged old channels. I'm here on Melton Hill Reservoir in East Tennessee today, and the water out here is very clear. It's a deep, clear reservoir, and there are blues in here. There are flatheads in here, but this is predominantly a channel cat body of water when it comes to catfish. Usually when I come out here, I'm either catching bait because there's a lot of skipjack in here or I'm targeting some form of bass. Bluegill's really good here too. This is one of the better uh, bluegill fisheries in East Tennessee. This dang old channel is not how I want to start my day. Y'all know I hate them things. They just, we just don't grow them big here like they do, like they get in a lot of places. A lot of places up north out west these things get big here they're just kind of a, a pest species they mess up our baits this one here's already tore my gulp minnow he's bit the tail off in the in the fight i gotta be careful with this line it's six pound but still he's thrashing around like that up 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 quit let me get that thing out of him there on a positive note, at least I got one first cast. Maybe the fish are going to be active today. Oh, gosh dang it, I hate these things. Can't get a hold of him. He's done tore my thumb up. Get on in this kayak here. You try that again, you ain't going nowhere. I told you. Now give me that hook, doggone you. There. 
No. Boy, I hate them things. Boy, they hate me as bad as I hate them, don't they? Honorary devils. Well, I gotta fix my bait here. This thing. Let me get my rod back over here. I'm gonna show you this thing. Tore up my gulp and bent my hook. First cast, first fish. I'm already out of commission for a minute here. Let me get this situated. We'll get back to it. Fish. I got him. That was a bad hook set. I was about to reel my bait in and he hit it. But we got him. I think this is a bass here. Not rolling around like that old channel cat was. Boy, he's a digging too, man. Whatever it is, it's a good sized fish. Uh, no, I've lied to you folks. It fooled me. It's another dang old channel cat. My gosh. Well, for those of you that's always owned me in the comments about not liking channels and wanting me to fish for them and this, that, and the other, you're getting what you asked for today because uh, that's two now. Two fish caught, two channel cats. That one fooled me. I really, he was digging, man. I really thought it was a bass. I'm going to use what I should have used on the first one back here. I'm so used to not having a net with me, I don't even think about it. Get in here, channel kitty. Well, if I can get hold of him. You see how lousy a net person I am, y'all. There we go. There we go. That old ugly thing. He threw my, my gulp off, too. These things will cost you some gulp minnows now. Listen here, y'all. He's got a bad attitude is what he's got. Let me get hold of him like this. I was going to say, he's got a chunk out of his tail. These fish are probably recently off the nest. Get out of here, Channel Kitty. Our water temps over here on Melton Hill, 82 degrees surface temps. I would say they're finished up spawning right now. And a lot of them probably going to be beat up if we continue to catch them, which I hope we don't. So I've made my way back up here to where I started, and I'm going to switch over now and throw the one inch. That's a one inch smelt colored gulp minnow on a 164th ounce jig head with a number eight hook, two pound test line, and this is on my six foot St. Croix ultralight rod. We're going to see if this don't improve the number of bites I'm getting down through here. There's one. I catch up with him coming right at me. That's a little better bluegill right there. I love catching these things. A lot of people seem to outgrow it, I guess. They move on to other fish and whatnot, but I don't think I ever did. I've always enjoyed catching bluegill. They're just plentiful. They're a hard fighting fish. As long as you got their appropriate tackle. Something hit me right then. end. Now you got it. And I like, you know, just getting action. If I'm ultralight fishing or doing this style of fishing, I want to get bit. And bluegill make sure that happens. You know, they, they are aggressive fish. Very underrated. And they are most parts of the United States, they're pretty plentiful. We got one right there. Let's see what this is. Oh, another bluegill. Boy, he's a digging though. Look at him. That's a better quality bluegill right there. They can pull some drag. You know, two pound line. I got my drag set kind of light anyway, but... It's a nice bluegill. Pretty things. You're lucky today, bluegill. I didn't bring my bucket. Not going to be keeping any. Fish. What is this right here? This this ain't no bluegill. Oh, oh, he's going under me here. I don't know what this is. It may be another danged old channel cat. He's taking some drag, whatever. I need to back off that just a little bit, don't I? 
let's see what this is here. It ain't come up flying up or nothing, so I don't think it's a bass. And he's pulling hard, so I would say either a channel cat or a drum, probably. A carp would have made a harder run. It's a mystery. I don't know what is going to be pulled up here. But it's big enough on this ultralight here and a two pound line. I got to take my time with it. And I'm not going to let myself be disappointed until I see that it's a channel cat. <laughs> He's stripping some drag. There's no way it's a bass. It would have come flying up and showed itself by now if it was. This is still, I'm still throwing the one inch gulp down through here. I'm just covering a stretch of this and then I think I'm going to go throw the Ned rig a little bit by these docks up here, see if I can get back on track and focus on the bass today. I just have fun with this ultralight, man. It's just a, I don't care what I catch as long as it ain't a channel cat. They're all fun. If I like channel cats, if I didn't hate them so bad, they would be fun to catch with this ultralight too. Oh, he's getting over there dangerously close to my motor. I'm getting away from that prop. Can't really do too much steering with the uh, two pound line and ultralight. They just kind of go where they want to go. I just hang on and enjoy it. Look at the bend he's got in that thing, man. <laughs> Even if it is a channel cat, if I was using my normal heavy action catfish rods, you wouldn't be getting that kind of bend. Not with this size fish, but you get a three, four, five pound fish on this setup, you better pack a lunch because it's going to take you a while to get it in. I don't know what it is. Just taking my time here. Oh, I saw part of a tail down there. Let's see, we're getting close now. Oh, it's a channel cat. Oh my gosh. Why? Why are they so dang aggressive today? Well, I'm not going to be upset if it breaks me off now. <laughs> It was a nice drum or something. I like catching drum. You know, a lot of people call them trash fish. I'm happy catching them on the ultralight, but these dang old channels. Bane of my existence. Every time I say something bad about channels, too, my comment box blows up. A lot of you's out there are channel cat lovers. And hey, no judgment from me. You know, you like what you like. A lot of places in this country, they get bigger and they're more respected. Just not the case here where I live. These are the trash fish of East Tennessee. I don't know a single person that likes catching them. All of us cat fishermen hate them. And everybody who likes fishing for crappie or bass or whatever, they all disappointed too when they, when they get one on their bass or crappie lures, you know can't eat nothing out of here because our water's contaminated so all the people that comment well you ought to take it home and eat it do a catch and cook or whatever i i don't want to get cancer you know so i don't want to be glowing in the dark <laughs> so they really don't have a purpose out here this in here ought to be about done i have fought him long enough get on over here channel cat get in there yeah, he's in that net. That's a that's a pretty good sized channel right there though. I'm gonna I got my measure board here with me. I I brought my bass board there just in case I got some decent sized bass. Throw them on there. We'll throw this channel cat on there if he'll cooperate. Alright, he broke my line, but that's alright. Let's put him on our board here. Yeah, that's a 24 inch channel cat right there. Old ornery devil. They do fight hard if you like them. I just don't like them. <laughs> now he gone. All right, let me retry here since he 
broke my line once I got him up here in the kayak. Oh, Lordy days, did you see that? I was reeling my bait in and it hit and I jerked, I jerked him plumb out of the water back toward my face. Well, we got us a bass. That's a tiny smallmouth. That right there, if I catch one that size in the tournament here in a couple weeks, I'm going to win the Small Bass Award, whatever it turns out to be. That's a sponsor prize of some kind. But that right there, well, I've got the dang board here. Let's just put him on it. By gosh, we'll measure us a bass today, even if he's three inches long. Let's, let's stick that thing on there, buddy. Look at this. Four and a half inch smallmouth bass. That's a win. Buddy, you show up again here in two weeks. I want to catch you. <laughs> there he goes. He may get eaten before then. That's a that's a meal to one of them channel cats we're catching today. Heck, that's a meal for a bigger bass, too. My gulp minnow got thrown off as I was pulling him through the air. It's a wonder he didn't fly back and hit me in the face. That would have made for a video, wouldn't it? <laughs> right back up in there I nailed that tree but it fell down in the water so that's what I want won't in the water not in the trees that's gonna help us catch a fish got one too one right there I don't know what that is Let me back up off this area here winds about to oh that's a better bluegill too that's a better bluegill that's gonna be the biggest one of the morning right here let me sit back down here and getting the winds blown me into the tree you there while I was fooling him. Nice. Yeah, y'all, I thought I'd... Oh, oh, well, there he went, too. Doggone it. That's all right. Yeah, y'all, I thought I'd come over here and hit this side because now with the sun shining down over here, fish in this clear water, they want the shade and it kind of creates these little shaded areas uh, for me to cast into and hopefully put my baits right in front of some better quality fish. There's another one on it instantly. There's another one hit it. <laughs> I missed the first one on this one. Come and got it. Nice. On the other side over there, I was getting some fish. But it's mostly just you know really small bluegill which again i like catching on this setup but for video purposes it just don't make for the best video to have 20 minutes of three inch bluegill so i thought well let's come over here and i want to hit a few different places out here today anyway i really need to be focusing on bass i need to be throwing the larger gulp and my ned rig and but I'm just in the mode for this, y'all. Oh, I had one follow right there. I'm going to drop it right back in front of him. Oh, he turned. He followed it up as I was reeling it in. I got another one right there. Oh, he's coming right at me too, buddy. There's another tree sticking out right here. I don't want him in. Oh, that's a nice one. That's another nice bluegill right there. Let me sit down here. I'm about to wind is being a pest right now gonna blow me in on this area i don't want to be blown in on I may tie off to this tree here for a second because that folks is a better quality bluegill look at him they're pretty fish man all that green purple orange blue beautiful See you, buddy. How'd you like that for a release shot? I'm just playing around. Playing around with the video, playing around with the fish. I'm just having a good time today. I have a good time every day I go fishing, but I truly enjoy this. The simplicity of it, just, you know, ultralight and some jigs. You lose a lot of them when you're casting around brush and everything. I had a fish hit me right over there and I pulled it out of his mouth. And got, look at this. I'll unwrap my 
I don't even know what's happened here. There it comes. Lordy days, man. Blooper reel today. What have I done here with my line? All right, well, after putting my rod in the tree and doing something crazy with my line, I'm back in business. Now, well, let's see if we can get another one. Sure as the world. And I put my rod in that same daggone tree up there. <laughs> I'm about to break that branch off. That's another bluegill right there. It ain't, ain't bad size. The quality has been upped on this side of the channel. See you, buddy. I'm gonna have to set the hook to the side instead of overhand. There's like some pile of bluegill back here in the shade. There we go. I can feel them pecking at it, chasing that one. This one come up and snatched it. That's another one there that's quality. I mean, that's if I was keeping them for catfish bait today, that one right there is big enough to go in the bucket. Not today, though, buddy. You're a free fish. You swim on. There's just a pile of bluegill over here in this little shaded pocket. Up, oh, up. Oh. Thought I had me one. Another one's going to hit it here in a second, though. Yep, right then. <laughs> There's so many in here. If one don't get it, the next one will. And this, this is the kind of fishing I like to get into when I'm ultralighting like this. Where you're getting some, oh, there he went. Where you're getting a, a fish on just about every cast. And it's a little better quality bluegill and there, there's another one. <laughs> every cast right here. But you know, you, you, you get these places, you just gotta keep moving. Keep covering water until you find them. And, yeah, I could keep throwing the three inch in here and I'd weed out some of the smaller bluegill. But some of these smaller bluegill are a lot of fun. You get a bluegill that's, you know, five, six inches. That's, that's a fight on this tackle I'm using. I don't necessarily want to weed them out. I do on bass tournament day. I don't want to today. Oh, something got me. That's a dang, that's one of them cicadas that popped me in the face and I got a fish on right here. Through adversity, I'm catching fish, y'all. <laughs> that thing about took my head off, that little cicada. I got half of mine to put him on the hook. Got another bluegill though. Another decent quality, another six incher or so. Dang old cicada. Come here, Cicada. Big mistake, Cicada. Big mistake. He just latched onto my lure there that I put in front of him. And my gulp minnow here, it's about to wear up. I think I'm gonna put this hook through him. All right, I got my hook through that Cicada. I'm gonna throw him over there and see if something will eat him. See if they'll come up and get him. Oh, something did. Then bluegill all over him right there. Got him. I got one. Got one on that cicada. <laughs> That's awesome. That's look at this one here, man. This bluegill here. He's got that cicada. Part of it anyway, coming out of his mouth. They tore that thing up. I could just see them bluegill swarming at it there, and this one snatched it. That's a, oh, oh, well, I was going to show him off there. They, they're spry, buddy. They're, they're wound up. Well, there's what's left of my cicada. Let me put me another gulp on there until another cicada comes down and pops me in the face. I think I took an eye out if I didn't have my glasses on. You know, I'm putting another gulp on this hook. You just want them on there straight. Again, that's 164th ounce, number eight hook. 
and you want that gulp coming off there straight so when it falls through the water it's kind of going down kind of horizontally that'll help you get some bites but they're so aggressive over here right now i think they about they about hit anything and right there's another one man <laughs> that's another quality gill too yeah I, folks i'm gonna be able to edit out all of them little three inches that i got over there on the other side and replace them with some better quality fish in this video ah it's another beautiful bluegill they're so pretty let's toss in there again I'll just keep making casts over there till I till I quit catching them. I got one. He's a digging too, man. You tell me these things. Look at that rod bend. You tell me these bluegill ain't hard fighting fish. If you ain't having a good time catching bluegill, your tackle's too big. You match the tackle to the size of the fish you're after and these little guys right here will give you a good time. Well, you want to bet I can go in there and get another one on the next cast here. Let's try it and see. Camera's still rolling. I hear a bee somewhere near me. It's distracting me. It's all right. Cicada popped me in the face a minute ago. I still caught the fish. Oh, oh. Missed one. I got another one. Oh, no. Pulled it out of his mouth and he got the gulp. I got cocky. I just knew I was going to get another fish there. And look what happened. Pulled a gulp right out of his mouth. I'm going to toss on this side too. I've let the, the wind's blowing me up against this tree here and I'm just using it to set here in place. And I've got a fish on just like that. So I'm throwing over here on this side, but I'm going to get this side of the tree too to see what's going on. That's a small one. Thought I might hit this side of the tree, give those fish a break for a second. Let's see, I bet you there's more. There's going to be fish in every one of these little shaded pockets, though, with the sun and the position that it is. Got a squirrel fight going on. Here's one. Oh no, he's got me in that tree. There he comes. Small one. Better ones are over here on this other side. I'm about to move back over there, or turn back over here, I should say. See, all I'm just cruising along right now. Look at this carp right here. He was eating a cicada right there on the surface. You see that? He was gobbling that thing up. Well, I was just cruising along looking for. Uh, some more shaded areas there's some shade up under them trees but i can't cast a jig up there because they're touching the water well i'm just moving along here looking for some more areas that i can cast through probably passing up a bunch of fish here truth be told you know i could be working these down trees and whatnot but the better quality bluegill that i just got on over there was was clearly showing a preference to that shaded area so we'll see if we can but yeah, I might be able to cast right up under here, maybe. If I see any more cicadas on top of the water, I'm going to snatch them up, too. We'll put them on the hook again. Look right here, y'all. <laughs> Cicada. He landed down there in my motor well. I couldn't get him with my hand. But by gosh, I got him. I'm going to put him on the hook. <laughs> we'll see if I can't get another one on this live cicada. Calm it down, Cicada. I'm about to put a hook in you. You gonna, you gonna catch me something, Cicada. There we go. All right, let's find us a place to cast this thing now. Let me get me another shaded area up through here. Well, I wouldn't mind catching one of them big old carp on this thing. Me and my buddy, Eric, went out there and targeted carp a week or two back with little lures because they were crushing the cicadas up on the surface but out here today there's not a big population of cicadas I'm getting a 
you know, a few sporadically through here, but I'm not seeing them all over the water. I'm not hearing them in the trees. So I think the fish are just taking advantage of the ones that are falling down, but there's definitely, they either not here in good numbers or they've already done their thing and died off, one of the two. I don't know how long this cicada deal lasts. Yeah, we're gonna find something. I'm, all these overhanging trees here, the wind blowing like it is, I need a, I need a pretty good open area to be able to cast this thing. I think we're going to throw it right up in here around this other tree. Yeah, that little pocket right there. I'm going to catch something on the cicada right there. Oh, yeah. That's where I'm going to catch it. Here we go. Live cicada. Got that jig head going through him, but he's keeping it on the surface. Oh no, it's, oh man, that little bluegill ripped him off. Dang. Oh, oh, here's another one. Look right here. Here's another, oh, oh. There was another one that tried to land on my rod. <laughs> I see him up there on that tree. Let me see if I can get over here to him. Y'all, this video has took a turn. See him up here on this tree? Let me see if I can just coax him into getting on my rod. Oh, I spooked him. He's in the water, though. Lord Almighty, I'm working harder to catch these cicadas than what I do for Skipjack. He's right there in the water. I get my motor spun around here. I'm going to get him. That other bluegill there, he was a little tiny bluegill. He cheated us. I at least wanted a better quality bluegill on that cicada. Come here. There he is. Y'all, here I am trying to hook his cicada. My phone's going off again. All right, we got him hooked. Let's see, let's see who's calling us. I don't know who, that's 1-800. 1-800, call me later. We got fish to catch. All right. Let's see if we can toss that cicada right up in there. Look at this, that dang cicada. That cicada attached himself to a little stick in the water. Let me try this again. Get him. Oh, they got him all right. Ripped him right off the hook. Daggone it. Well guys, I have crossed back over to the other side of the channel again and worked my way back in here to this little creek. Y'all didn't bother to tell me over there a few minutes ago, but I was putting on quite a show when I'm trying to snatch them cicadas out of the sky and get them on the hook and everything. As dumb as I probably looked on camera, I can only imagine what kind of idiot I looked like in the live show and there was a boat right behind me with two people in it watching the whole thing. So y'all could have been nice and gave me the heads up, but you didn't. Well, nevertheless, I got away from them people and crossed over the channel here and I'm gonna go to the back of this creek here and kind of work my way out and hit the shade here, throw in the scope and, and see what all we can find up in here. Oh, he thumped, man. Oh, get out of them, get out of them sticks. There we go. I can feel him running through stuff down there. That's another quality bluegill. That is a quality gill right there, man. I like catching them that size. Anytime I can get them. Get the thing out of his mouth. There we go. That right there wasn't coming free. Nice. Palm size. Throw back in there too. Just kind of tossing it. There's all kinds of, I mean, hell, all this looks the same. You know, at some point, there's just down trees and brush and overhanging trees and, you know, just all kinds of cover for these fish to get into. And the more you throw at, the more fish you're going to catch. I really need to leave these bluegill alone and get back to focusing on trying to find me some bass to fish this tournament with, but 
I just, I'm in the mood to be catching some fish out here, y'all, and they're biting so dang good, it's hard for me to, to get away from it, to focus on the, the bass. I'll regret it on tournament day, probably, but that's all right. That's two weeks away. Hell, I may not even be alive then. Gotta have my fun while you can. Well, he is coming right at me. Well, that's a digging, man. Let's take a look at this. And, oh, man, that's a good one right there. That's a good one. I'm gonna boat lift him up here. That's another palm sizer. That one up under this creek here again, it's about half of it you can see shaded from where the sun's positioned in the sky. And that one right there, man. Oh, oh, there he goes. Old palm size blue. I'm just throwing over here around these trees and stick ups and stuff. And I got another one, it's got it right there. As soon as it hit the water. That feels like another one here that's a little better quality. Dang, there's some good quality bluegill here at Melton Hill. It's underrated for the bluegill. That one ain't quite as big as the other one, but he's a he's a nice size. Let me get my pliers here on this one. He didn't take it. I got part of that cicada wing there on my dang pliers. There we go. There it is. All right, Bluegill. We'll see you next time. You were fun. Well, let's just make another cast right over there. There's two in that general area there. My line twitched. I got another one. Didn't feel that one. Just saw my line kind of just to one side. That's a that's another man. That's another dang good gill. Look at this one. Look at that. That's another palm size. He wasn't coming free. He went, he got hooked right through the nostril. Beautiful man. That's awesome. And some more right here. I'm just gonna keep making a few more casts right here. That jig, I mean, all of, all I'm doing is just letting that thing fall. Just letting it sink, and and that one inch size on the one sixty fourth head, it falls just kind of horizontally down through there. They can't resist it. No, it's it's falling down there. I'm gonna just twitch it a little bit and reel it back to me. That's what I'm doing ninety nine percent of the time. Most fish I catch are on the fall, and I just hooked one right there. If I don't get them on the fall, I start doing that twitch in there. That's the Randy Goad technique. That twitch method there on Trout Magnet Man YouTube channel. If you don't get them on the fall, you oftentimes get them on the twitch as you bring it back to you. And I got another one right here. Another palm size. Well, you cat fishermen out there that watch my videos that like using bluegill, y'all gonna be upset with me about throwing all these quality baits back, but just out here enjoying them today. I don't really need to bait. Skipjack has just been on fire around here this year. They've been easy to come by and that's my preferred bait for the catfish. I got another bluegill right there. I mean, it's ever cast. They just stacked up right here. This one here is going to be another, another decent quality right here. He threw the gulp off. That may have been my last one. All right, Mr. Bluegill, you get on out here. Let me look and see if I got another. I was running low a minute ago. Y'all, this is my last one inch gulp minnow. We gotta make it count. Once this one's gone, I'll probably end the video because this, this crap's probably 30 plus minutes long at this point, even after I edit out a bunch of the smaller bluegill so i doubt anybody's still watching at this point anyhow once i once i lose this and that's gonna be it and since this is my last one probably the next dang fish it'll probably be a little 
two inch bluegill that rips it off. That'd be old Murphy and his law. Used to be a show called Murphy Brown. That woman may be dead by now. I don't know. That's from the 80s, I think. I don't remember what it was about, but I remember a Murphy Brown. When I was a kid, my favorite baseball player was Dale Murphy on the Braves. Then he went to the Philadelphia Phillies. I can't remember if he got traded or if he just went there as a free agent. But I didn't understand that as a kid, so all I knew was that Dale Murphy, my favorite baseball player, wasn't on the Braves anymore, so I never did like the Braves again after that. I got another fish right there. Old Dale Murphy. I remember, well, there was, a, there was some more come up with him, too. I was a kid, you know, collecting baseball cards and stuff. The 1988 Don Russ cards had Dale Murphy on the box. Them cards today, they were so overproduced, they wasn't worth anything. Kind of like my YouTube videos. But uh, I had a bunch of them back in. And old Dale Murphy. I reckon he's still alive. I don't know what he's up to these days. I think he was a Mormon. He may be out there in Utah or something. I don't know. Seems to be a lot of them out there. This one's a digging right here, man. That's another great gill. Nice. Look at that thing, man. Again, that's palm size on my hand right there. Beautiful gill. You know, the morning today kind of started out kind of rough getting a channel cat on the first cast, but once we got away from them old kitties, the day picked up. There's another one. My line got tied on me. Didn't feel it hit. Just, just felt a little tension there on my line. That's another, that's another decent size. Not as big as some of them that I've pulled off of there, but worth catching for sure. I'm going to fix this gulp back. I ain't going to get many more fish on it. Oh, oh boy, I yanked that and plumb out of the water. <laughs> I got a little too excited on that one. Oh, well, he threw the gulp off. Or I threw it off when I yanked him. Plumb up off the surface of the water there. Get out of here, bluegill. Well, guys, um, I think that's probably a fitting end of the video there since that was the last one-inch gulp. Again, I could, you know, use a larger gulp there on a, a jig with a smaller hook size and probably keep catching these and maybe weed out some of the smaller ones too there. But uh, I got some stuff I got to do this afternoon, so this is a good stopping point for me too. But I had a dang good time out here, man. Didn't... Didn't help myself at all for this upcoming bass tournament, but caught fish, had fun, and uh, that's what it's all about, man. Every time I go out, I want to catch fish and have fun, and I hope that translates through these videos. I hope you can see it, because fishing's a lot of fun, and this ultralight fishing, I've said it in every ultralight fishing video I've ever done, but if you haven't tried it, give it a shot, because you can go out any body of water, catch a ton of fish and doesn't matter how big they are because they all fun to catch on the ultralight but anyway y'all for those of you that stuck through this crap this long thank you for doing it and i will see you next time thanks for watching